Chapter 32 Kick Ass That afternoon, they had a meeting to discuss strategy and prepared to leave. Before the meeting officially started, Perry stood up and looked around. Okay, so what the fuck are we trying to do? King stood up. Kill company. Uh, you can't kill a company, Perry answered back in a high voice. Kill building, kill company. King answered confidently. Tony jumped in. Wait, you've seen this building? The Elosa building? King replied, me not see. I saw it, Bob cut in. I was there, mon. We did a Jeep recon up there. Where's there? Tony asked. Bob pointed north. It be being huge, mon. Was it like a Death Star or something? Perry asked. It was a building, mon, Bob answered. Yeah, but did it have, like, guns all over it and spaceships flying around and shit? Perry asked. Nah, mon. Tony liked that answer and thought out loud, hmm, maybe we can just drive up there and blow the shit out of that place with our own war store? Perry replied, it can't be defenseless. L added, maybe this crazy forest is their defense. Bob, then Bob reminded them, today be being the seventh day, mon. New war store, mon. King concluded the meeting. Let's rock. The tribe started to prepare for war. The chimps and gorillas really liked the medieval armor, and they fit on as much as they could. Tony watched the tribe prepare. One of the gamer chimps grabbed Tony's shoulder. Come! Together they walked over to a pile of drone boxes. Watch! All of the drone boxes were unpacked and were all sitting there in a circle on the ground. The chimp sat next to them. He had a small screen made of stackers. He touched the screen and it lit up and he started moving windows around. The screen changed and had a hundred little dots on it. Each dot was equal distance from the others and they seemed to form a 10 by 10 square. The chimp scooted over and grabbed a drone. He touched the drone to the stacker and the drone took off into the air. Then it suddenly stopped and began hovering. He touched another drone to the stacker and it took off, doing the same thing. It flew up and began hovering next to the previous drone. He kept doing this and the drones began forming a wall in the sky, one by one, a 10 by 10 square. He touched two at a time and they quickly went into formation. The chimp smiled as he did this. When all the drones were up and in perfect formation, he moved his finger on the stacker and all the drones moved together in perfect formation. The chimp smiled even bigger and looked up to Tony as the drones mirrored his finger moving on the stacker. Rad, Tony said. That actually gives me a great idea. Tony patted the gamer chimp on the back and knelt down next to him. They began talking. Tony turned and looked up at the war store. Some of the tribe was climbing up the giant machine. At the top, it was lined with chimps, gorillas, and monkeys, all with random assorted pieces of medieval armor, swords, axes, morning stars, tasers, and pepper spray. King was giving a pre-battle speech. They all cheered, raised their weapons, and began hooting and hollering like a bunch of angry apes and monkeys. To anyone except for Tony, Perry, and L, this would actually look pretty fucking scary. But to them, these guys were on their side and it looked cool as fucking shit. This is it. Tony looked at his fellow humans, then laughed at himself. Isn't that what they say in all the movies before the final battle? Elle shook her head. Yep. Her oversized Viking helmet lagging behind her head moving back and forth. She was still wielding that battle axe, had a chainmail chest piece over her guar shirt, her normal slightly ripped jeans, and had two glocks strapped to her hips. She looked like fucking heavy metal Tomb Raider. 
L looked down at Fozzie. And you, you little shithead, you're staying here. Aliens reference. Perry and Tony looked at each other and shook their heads. Perry laughed. Ha ha, good one, L. That's maybe your best one ever. L laughed back and made a funny face at him. Thanks. L, you, you look all hot and ready for battle, Tony complimented L. He leaned in and kissed her, his forehead pushing against her Viking helmet. Perry had put on a chainmail chest piece also. He had a shotgun strapped to his back and a small pack around his waist, and, and of course, his fear and loathing suitcase on his back. And that was it. Well, he was also still holding one of those rainbow dildos. He shook it into the sky. Candy! Where are you? Tony had found a cool plate mail chest piece that wasn't too big or cumbersome that he liked, and he was wearing that. It had a sweet dragon on the chest. He had two glocks holstered around his waist and a bag slung over his shoulder. In the bag, he had a jumble of pepper spray and tasers. He opened the bag and showed its contents to the others at, like he was asking, Want more? Like he was a big bag of chips. Perry took a taser and put it in his pack. Elle took one of each and strapped them to her belt. They walked towards the war store. In a movie, it would be dusty and windy. They would be walking in slow motion, in unison, music pumping in the background, with all with badass looks on their faces. They heard an engine on the other side of the war store, and a second later, Lemmy came sliding around the corner in his Jeep. He did a power slide that ended up a few feet away from the humans. And he had a big smile on his face. Ready? He asked. <clears throat> they all replied and laughed. Ha ha, I yeah. And a few jumped into the jeep and the rest began climbing up the war store. The tribe saw Lemmy from the top of the war store and cheered. Ah! Cheered, thrusting their weapons into the sky. Ah! Ah! A bunch of gorillas, chimps, and monkeys climbed down the front of the war store to get into the clown car of a jeep. They could freely climb the face of the war store. They zipped by the climbing humans who had to use the maintenance ladders to climb into the cockpit. The humans took a while to climb all the way up to the top of the war store. They finally made it and were standing on the graded walkway outside the cockpit, right where Slash blew the captain's fucking brains out. A lot of the tribe were hanging out there. Moon was there. He had a cool suit of plate mail armor that covered his whole body. He would have had a really good armor class. And of course, his baboon ass was sticking out the back of his plate mail armor. In some weird way, that reminded Perry of his pregnant ex-girlfriend. They were a ragtag looking bunch, kind of a Mad Max meets Planet of the Apes. But they were ready and they raised their weapons into the air as the humans walked by. Ooh, 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 ha, ha. Some grunted and hooted. Perry looked left and right, acknowledging each of them. Yeah, kick ass, he said to the group. 